Aries full moon is really, really powerful. I haven't seen a full moon this powerful in a really long time. For those of you who have Aries in your chart, if you're an Aries rising sun or moon, you're really going to feel this depending on which house of the chart um, your Aries uh, sign is in. Now, my interpretation of this full moon is a little bit different than a lot of the astrologers that you're going to listen to. Um, a lot of times you'll hear, and you've even he heard me oftentimes describe Aries energy as a very powerful energy, an energy of warrior, warlike, aggression. But there's a whole other side of Aries, which I think is really going to be very powerful with this full moon. And I think we can use the energy in order to propel our lives forward and really elevate us into more of a soul space. And that energy is that Aries is an energy that wants us to be present. It's Aries is an energy of presence. When you think of a buzzword with Aries, it's presence. Aries walk into the room and they want to take space. They want to feel space. They want to be in a space. Aries is in our chart, wherever it falls, is where we take up space. Aries wants to challenge us to take up more space in our life. So where do you take up space? Where are you comfortable taking up space? Is that in your work environment, your family environment, maybe it's at a club or a community or someplace that you feel like you can really walk in and take that Wonder Woman stance and just, you know, stand there very powerfully and you can take up space comfortably and safely in that area. But more importantly, where are the areas where you don't take up the space that maybe you should, that you're entitled to, um, that maybe would increase your self-worth? That's what Aries is all about. It's about being, being fully present. Aries is the opposite of Libra. Whenever we have a full moon, that means the sun is in a sign and the moon is in a sign and they're opposite. So right now we have a moon in Aries and our sun is in Libra. For those of you celebrating birthdays that are Librans, you know that. So that opposition creates an axis of a Libra-Aries axis. Aries is independent. It doesn't like to be restricted. It likes to be curious and find new things, new ways of doing things, new ways of being present in the world, new ways of standing in their space. That's Aries energy. Libra in the opposite, the axis energy, is one of Librans avoid conflict. They don't want to go where things might be a little challenging. Aries lives for the challenge. So in this energy, we're asked to really kind of equalize that polarity. How do we do that? Well, this is going to be an energy that's going to challenge us in our lives to take up the space we should be taking up. If you're somewhere where you're not seen, you need to make yourself seen there in a very healthy way. Maybe at work you're overlooked and maybe that's because you really don't communicate or let them know what you're doing with your time or the projects that you work on. So it's time to maybe do that in a healthy way. Or maybe in your family, you don't always get the invitation or you're not always included. Now is the time for you to take the space that you're supposed to take. That's an Aryan energy. And you want to do that with valor and courage. Um, and that's why we're going to talk a lot about trust later in the show. So right now we're in an energy where it feels like things are starting to move forward, but we're still in this like weird gear stuck energy. And that's because we still have five planets that are not moving forward. Venus and uh, Mars just recently started to move forward in the Zodiac. That's why we're feeling like things are easing up a little bit, but we still have a long way to go. So this Aries full moon comes in and it shakes us up. This is aspecting other planets, which I won't go too into the details, but it's almost like one of those rides at the amusement park where you sit in it and it shakes you. I remember years ago being on the Revenge of the Mummy ride at Universal Studios, and there was a portion of the ride where it pulled us backwards and dropped us down like five stories. I think I still left a part of my heart there, but um, it's rattling. It's, it's erupting. It's um, shocking. Mercury comes into play. Mercury is our minds and our speech and our communication. So the first thing I'm going to tell you guys over the next few days up until the weekend is watch your words because things are going to start to come out in words. You're going to speak before you really think. Um, it can be explosive. So really, really watch your words in this energy. That's the best advice I can give you um, because you want to maybe talk less and think more in this energy, <laughs> um, be a little more introspective. Um, this is also kind of an overdose of cosmic energy. I think that we're going to feel a lot of instability going into Friday. This full moon comes in at 6.52 in the morning. So it's when we're sleeping or maybe when we're just starting to get ready for work and things like that. 
Um, the best advice I can give you come Friday because Uranus, which is the planet of sudden impulsive change, is working on this Aries energy. So think about that. Aries is the ram, right? The ram always, you know, thrusts in and flies in and comes in the room or the ram charges forward. So when you have ram, Aryan energy in line with the planet Uranus, which is sudden unexpected change, it can really cause something to erupt or be volcanic or something to happen where maybe you're going to want to backtrack and think about it in a different way. So proceed cautiously if you can. Don't be that ram. Be a slower ram. Best advice aside from watching the words is remain flexible and also be self-aware. Something Aries is not always great at doing because they're always very fast-paced and in a rush. But you want to bring in that Libra energy, which is a little more self-aware. Um, be willing to embrace the unknown, be open to change and transformation, and um, welcome the surprise. Realize that sometimes when change happens or a surprise happens, that it oftentimes is something that's redirecting you in a better way. So you may feel frustrated, but it's probably happening for a reason. So try and bring that to a higher octave for yourself. Um, and then I will say that we will have a tendency in this energy, especially as we go through to the weekend, to overcompensate. Um, it's what we call in the astrology world a reaction formation. Um, people do that in a personality when you know something starts to be disruptive or uh, discord starts to happen and we start to overcompensate in some way. Um, maybe we increase the conversation when we really should be quiet or we start to do more activity when we really should be more restful. Um, that's a reaction formation. So watch in your life where you have a tendency to have those reactive formations, reaction formations that sometimes can cause the discord, the volatility to become even more so. And just watch yourself. Um, what you want to do when you start to feel that energy come in, the discord kind of ramping up, is you want to maybe stop the motion, breathe, go into a little bit of contemplation, introspection, um, and think about what resources you have within you that can change the course of things instead of just jumping into action. You know, it's almost like you bake a cake and you forgot one of the ingredients. So now you're going to throw more of it in and then, oh, maybe this will look good and this will be good and this will be, and you just start throwing stuff on top of stuff on top of stuff. That's kind of the energy. Um, what you really want to do is realize you know more than you think you know, and you can really go into a more quietude kind of place. Think about the resources. Think about the best course of action. Be a little more strategic, all right? Definitely watch the words. We talked about that. Thursday night's going to be a really restless night before this full moon comes in. A lot of us are probably going to find sleep a little bit elusive. Um, and also, uh, you possibly could find that it conjures up a lot of dreams when you do go to sleep that evening. There's a very important full moon. It wants us to go into a cycle where we have an awareness of doing things in a different way. Totally Aryan energy. Aries is that. It wants us to act on things, not repress, but not like the ram running through, you know, a, a field. It wants us to do it in a way that we have adaptability. We use adaptability. We use our resources in order to be adapt and flexible. I have a... Um, an expression that I often use, act, improvise, activate, overcome. I use that expression, gosh, 50 times a day in my business life, and I bring it into my personal life a little bit too. You want to improvise, activate, overcome. That's really the strategic way to get through this uh, full moon. Also, this full moon has a lot of power. I will tell you that right now, especially the Aries Libran axis is all about relationships. That is an a axis where it is in the Aryan portion. Aries is curious and Aries wants information. Aries likes to know things. But Aries is wise enough in the highest octave to know that we don't learn anything without engaging the other. So there comes a time in the Aryan cycle where we have to actually be counseled and be open to being counseled by someone who knows better. When you're in the lower octave of Aryan energy, you don't allow that. You don't listen to anyone. You think you know everything. It's from an ego perspective. That's a fear of the unknown. So 
if a healthy Aryan full moon is what you want to experience in this energy, you want to be open to understanding that the things you want to know may also be brought to you through knowing someone else, through communication, through connection, because we can't learn everything if we only talk to ourselves and we become repressed. We have to act things out and have communication and conversation with another in order to learn more. We don't know everything. It comes from our interaction with others, and that's growth. So that's the moon. It's coming in hot. It's going to be with us building up all week, and then it's going to really rattle some cages. Also, the other thing with this Aryan full moon is there's going to be a lot of weird attractions. You know, you may find yourself attracted to things you wouldn't normally be attracted to, whether that's food or uh, a place to go or a person, all right? And a lot of people, especially you're going to see this act out Friday night, a lot of people are going to like give in to those attractions, go for it. You're going to see a lot of weirdness in the world. And then I think, you know, come Saturday, Sunday, you might have a lot of morning after parties that are like not so fun. Um, so I'm just putting that out there. Remember, I always tell you guys this on the podcast and I tell myself this 20,000 times a day. Not everything that comes into your focus deserves your attention. Be sparingly with it. All right. Um, this is also going to bring in on Saturday something that is new to us, something that hasn't happened before. So when you think about this full moon and the energy it's bringing in, it's not a repetitive cycle. This is all new. Something that hasn't happened. It's bringing in a whole lot of new stuff. Really going to be pretty good. Um, and also it could mean a lesson in self-control. It could mean a lesson that wants you to take a pause. So these last few days of September or until the first few days of October really are packing a powerhouse of lessons for us. So just remember, when in doubt, go slow. Confusion is an energy that is a good energy. A lot of times people push away confusion and feel like they have to act on it right away. That's also our fear of the unknown. When confusion comes into your life, you want to really look at it, dive deep in it, examine it. Don't be afraid of it and don't push it away because confusion means something's about to change and you have control over what that something is. But first you got to look at the confusion. So remember that um, and maybe exercise a little self-control. These next few days into the first few days of October really are going to be very hectic. They'll feel a little speeded up. You may be really challenged as things really become more of um, a challenge to you as far as where you really take up space and what you really want your life to look at as far as the places where you're recognized. It's a lot about recognition. It's about recognition in relationships, recognizing when things are truly appealing and for your higher good, and recognizing when things are appealing, but probably not for your higher good, all right? So have that discernment.